Kansas City. Now, let's talk about exercise selection real quick and then put this all together for the audience. Um, when people are looking for exercises to do to optimize our hypertrophy and increasing aesthetics, what are the exercises that people should be focusing on in general? You want exercises that provide your muscles with a high degree of muscle tension mm -hmm. throughout a large range of motion, and in particular, getting a good stretch. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of research from the last couple of years that shows that stretch-mediated hypertrophy, which just means that hypertrophy you get from training at long muscle lengths, is very important for maximizing growth. So you want to get a nice deep stretch, you know, squat all the way down, bench press all the way down, get the bar to your chest, and preferably even use dumbbells or something so you can get even lower. Don't sabotage your gains. One of the biggest mistakes that people make in the gym is ego lifting, is cutting the range of motion short to lift more weight. And then the only thing that's going to get bigger is your ego, not your muscles. Mm. So what are so if people were to you know draft, I guess like an uh, exercise plan. What exercises do you think every body should have in their repertoire to some degree? As far as like maybe let's say maybe an, uh, a leg movement, a pull movement, a push movement. What should the basics be in anyone's uh, repertoire? I don't think there are any must-have exercises. There are okay. a lot of exercises which are really good. Mm -hmm. You know, the squat, bench press, but there are lots of variants that you can do. And it's most important that you find exercises that agree with your body. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's, of course, train the muscles that you want to train. If you want to train full body, then you need to, uh, you need to train every muscle group. And you need to do squats, lateral movements, Romanian deadlifts, bench presses. I like dumbbell bench press a lot. Push-ups mm -hmm. are actually really good. Mm -hmm. um, you need to load them somewhere, somehow, but then they're really good. Uh, rows can be great, especially for the upper back. I'm more of a fan of chin-ups, vertical type pulling movements. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just fill in for all the muscle groups that you want. You need one or two exercises, maybe more if it's a complicated muscle group. And then you fill your volume in that way. Okay. Uh, so are you, so you prefer, you said the vertical pulling movements versus the horizontal. So like if you're doing pull-ups all the time, is there a need to do rows or if you're or vice versa? Not really. Okay. Okay. Um, it's probably good to have both, yeah. especially high rows I like. Mm -hmm. If you're doing chin-ups, you're hitting the lats very well. The biceps get strained. The rear delts get a decent stimulus. The middle and lower traps get a stimulus. The upper traps, you're not really training. Mm -hmm. So you would want to combine that with at least a shrug or a decent amount of shoulder work to really balance out the development for the whole back. And then the lower back, you hit that with deadlifts or squats typically, not so much with the, the back work anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. But... In general, I think that people overestimate rows a little bit, and they're like, oh, I have to do a vertical, and I have to do a horizontal pattern. Yeah, yeah, that's but, a... Yeah, the, the body doesn't work that way. Like, for muscle growth, that that doesn't really make sense. Yeah. Because the body doesn't care if, you're, if the movement pattern is diagonal, horizontal, or whatever the hell. It's It just cares if the muscle is under tension or not. Yeah. And vertical pulling movements, like pull-downs, chin-ups, uh, they typically put almost all the back under high tension, and also for greater range of motion, especially for the lats, than a horizontal one. So it's not strictly necessary to do any horizontal type movement. The important thing is that you hit all the muscle groups that you want to train. Yeah. And, and I, and I asked that because the gym bros, I remember would always say, you know, the pull-ups build the, 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 the width and then, you know, the rows build the thickness. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, is this bro science? Like, do you really need to be doing rows like that? Uh, you know, when you can actually just do pull-ups, which to be honest with you, pull-ups are harder than doing rows. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah. So you're going to get the same stimuli from a vertical versus a horizontal pulling movement. I think it's a, a big similar. simplification. There is some truth behind it that uh -huh. rows are better for the traps and especially the higher fibers of the traps, whereas chin-ups are better for the lats. Yeah. But chin-ups are equally good for most of the traps if you do them with full range of motion and the rear delts. So, yeah, the, the it's like they have slightly different functions, but chin-ups are definitely a better overall movement. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing chin-ups and pull-ups and you're doing shrugs, you've basically eliminated the need to do rows. Yeah, which, you know, they can be a good exercise to put in a program, but they're certainly not essential. Gotcha. Um, okay, so you, it's, if we're, so we're going to talk about essentials, maybe a squat-type movement. Would, would a lunge, would you say a lunge could it also qualify as like a... How do I say this? As a replacement for someone that might not want to squat or deadlifts? Mm -hmm. Yep. I think Bulgarian split squats, reverse deficit lunges, squats, front squat, back squats, low bar, high bar. All of these actually all of these exercises have quite similar effects on muscle hypertrophy of the quads and the glutes, which are the primary targets. Yeah. So they are largely interchangeable and 
people have uh, squat religion somewhat, where the power lifts in general are, are seen as uh, exercises yeah. that thou shalt do. Yeah, you but must that's, do. That's not really necessary unless you're powerlifting. Yeah. Um, okay. So as long as you're doing whether it's – and I kind of always tell people this too. Like when you're exercise selection, like get a king movement for each plane, right? So like you get a king movement for legs, right? It could be a squat, a deadlift, or a lunge. Pick one of those three or a variation of those three. Then for chest, pick a bench press of some kind. Um, I've always said I think the decline bench is fairly useless, but I, I don't know if you have data that proves me wrong on that. I think uh, whether it's a flat or preferably an incline because it's very difficult to hit. The, the upper chest typically tends to be the least – uh, uh, developed a lot of the times on most people, right? Because you can easily get stimuli in the mi middle and b lower chest. Uh, so hit some kind of you know bench press exercise, whether it's barbell bench or a dumbbell bench, right? And I agree with you. I like dumbbells better too, with a better stretch. Then get some type of pulling movement, um, whether it's a pull up or a row, which we just discussed. You know, might be better in better interest to do a pull up, and uh, you know, or maybe even a lap pull down if you don't have the strength. But if you figure out, if you could pull one of these exercises and then maybe maybe an accessory movement on top of that, you should be pretty good. What do you think? I don't know. Yeah, then we'll cover the basics. And then, you know, if you want to optimize, then you need to figure out the muscle, the volume for every individual muscle group and how well every exercise hits each individual muscle group. Then you really get to the fine tuning and the optimization. But with what you mentioned, you get a decent uh, uh, stimulation of all the basics. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So let's put this all together. So we talked about volume, frequency, intensity, and exercise selection. So, um, for the audience out there that's watching, they might be like, oh man, this is incredible information. I want to put it all together. Based on what we talked about, what is like, let's say a hypothetical good split routine that someone who is a beginner and or intermediate can implement right here right now after watching this podcast based on the information that we gave some maybe like a blank rubric uh, template that we can give them i'm a big fan of full body training mm -hmm. you know hits um three to four times per week hits every muscle group with at least one good exercise mm -hmm. just one exercise per muscle group can be fine and a couple sets and then you've got your high tension so you check that box you just want to train with very high effort. Don't worry so much about the exact rep ranges. Worry about progressive overload, doing more reps every time you go to the gym than the last time or adding more weight to the bar. And that's mostly just to force yourself to train very hard and to see that you are progressing. Do that. And that really is the most important thing, like training hard, getting a good uh, volume in of effective exercises and how many reps you do. Even the, the things like your rest interval and the like, they are not nearly as important as just getting these basics right consistently for a long period of time. Yeah. Um, so if you go, so I guess what hy hypothetical split we could do here is you're, so you're going in, you're hitting, si you know, no more than six sets per muscle group, right? You're trying to do full body. You're going to the gym three to four times per week. You go in there, maybe you can start with a leg movement. You can start with a lunge. Then you go into a mm -hmm. push. Then you go into a pull. Six sets per then maybe add two accessory movements, right? Maybe a bicep curl, then a tricep uh, push down or whatever. Maybe three to four sets for those. Then come in the next week, do something else. Start instead of with a lunge, maybe this time do a, a deadlift. Then go ahead and do uh, a dumbbell press versus a bench press. Then go ahead and do a pull-up versus a, a chin-up. And then next day, and then the third day, go in there, go in with maybe a, you know, a squat. And then, you know, a bench press. Then a pull of some kind. And then hit those accessory movements. Keep each exercise to... Six sets or below because we talked about the Krieger and the, the diminishing returns. Um, and that should help you hit your volume and frequency that's needed, right? I, I would say that's a pretty decent beginner movement uh, pattern. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And Go so ahead, for the, uh, the optimization, because this is simply where, you know, you need to, if you want to be like a fully optimized program, you just need to sit down, count the volume and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So we're actually working on an app that can do all of this for you called Cybernetic Fitness. It's not out yet, but that should be a really good way to just plug and play. Yeah. Get an optimized program. Not always the AI that can actually do all of this for us, and uh, rock and roll. Yeah. That's way easier. Bro. Yeah, and that's and that's kind of the beauty of it because oh. what what because the thing is about with with training that so many people get wrong is like it's a delicate balance between so many different factors. Are you getting enough volume while simultaneously getting enough um, intensity? Um, you know, is your exercise selection good, frequency, et cetera. So like all these things, all these factors come into play where you got to fine tune your training. Then you got to fine tune it even more based on your experience level, right? Someone who's more advanced. They might be able to get away with doing the full six sets, seven sets, whatever uh, per workout and be somewhat okay. So it, it depends on the individual too. Let me ask you this, Menno. Let's talk about rest periods. 
Um, mm-hmm. You know, obviously, you know, got to train hard. Yeah, short rest periods. You know, some people swear by.